皆さんこんにちは。And welcome to Shogo's podcast. So today in this podcast, I would like to answer a question that I often receive, and it is、um, Where would you recommend in Japan if I were to study abroad in, to Japan? Which prefecture would you recommend? Yes, it's something that a lot of people have been asking me. And so I'd like to answer this question. Yes, and you might already probably understand from the thumbnail, but of course, the answer is the city I live right in right now, Kyoto. Yes. So I'd like to、um, talk about the three reasons why I really recommend Kyoto. Not just because that I'm born, born in Kyoto and I live in Kyoto now. Seriously,、um, taking a look at the facts, I still really recommend Kyoto. Kyoto because of these three things. I like to talk about them and、um, they'll get more and more、uh, important towards the end. So I hope you can enjoy this podcast till the very last third one, third reason too. Okay? So、uh, the first one, very obvious, I, everyone would know about this, but there's of course a lot of history and culture in Kyoto. Yes.、Um, I really think that. It's amazing how everything that you learn in, through textbooks or through history, history class and such, you just take one train ride or one bus ride somewhere and you find these places. You can actually step on the land that these you know, historical people have stepped on. You can、um, you know, visit the shrine that Miyamoto Musashi went to, the Hachidai Shrine, or you can see places where the Shinsengu members fought, where、um, the Katana attacks are left on parts of the bridge.、Uh, I think it was the metal part, a little bit on the wood part too, or buildings. Yeah, again, Shinsengu, but where the,、uh, the, most, the biggest incident called the Ikedaya incident happened. It's a restaurant right now, but You know, these things, you know, everything. There, there's the shrine that、uh, worships Oda Nobunaga, and、uh, there's also one that、um, worships Abe no Seime, the Omyoji, you know? And these places, like, you can go in like 30 minutes, within 30 minutes on trains or buses, and you can just go there and you get to see all the beautiful nature. And it's just, I think it's really amazing. Yes, it's, it's not, so, not something completely in the past because you get to be there, if that makes sense, yes. And for me, of course, each prefecture has a lot of its、um, original, unique culture and history. But in Kyoto,、um, for example, if you study abroad for about an year, for the whole year, you will never be bored. I promise you that, yes. Because there's just simply so much to see and do in Kyoto. I think, yes. So that's the first reason. The second reason, this is really up to you. It's really up to the person, but I really love Kyoto, how it's not that、um, over,、uh, not that, should I say, doesn't have too many people, but not too less either, if that makes sense. The population is not too big, but not too little either. So, I know that there are a lot of people who love the bigger cities. Like my younger sister, who is a professional singer, she lives in Tokyo and she is like, I am in love with Tokyo and I cannot live anywhere else. Yes. And I do understand what she means. I did enjoy my time being in Beijing, where these, you know, the bigger cities, it's nice how,、um, because everyone is just so busy and there's just so many people, basically, no one cares about you. If that makes sense, you know, if you live in a smaller city where like everyone knows each other kind of thing, it's really stressful sometimes. Like in the countryside places in Japan, like every neighborhood knows about you. Pe some people like, like that, you know,、um, having a strong bond with the community and such, but I do understand that sometimes it gets stressful, you know, who did you get married with, or are you gonna have kids, or, you know, what, which university you're gonna go to. Like, everyone asking you the same questions and everyone knowing about you does get a little bit stressful sometimes, yes. But, but personally, me, I'm not a big fan of a big city, by the way.、Um, it's a little bit too overcrowded. For me, that is stressful too. But also at the same time, I don't like、um, to live in places where it is too little, pop the little population is too little, if that makes sense. Because I do love、um, connections with people. You know, I do, I would love to make friends if possible. I would like to meet more people, you know. And Especially because in Kyoto, there's rather more people training in traditional culture, too. Yes. Meeting up with these people, connecting with them, becoming friends is, is really great. I mean,、um, in the center cities of Kyoto, most places aren't that crowded at all you know, compared to Tokyo and Osaka. But the center cities、um, are. 
pretty, there are quite a lot of people, yes. And I actually enjoy that, you know? It's really, it's really energetic, yes. Um, if every place was just really vacant, you know, vacant, I, it would be a little bit lonely for me, yes. So I really love the balance of that, yes. If you want to go somewhere more uh, with a lot of people, with a lot of energy, you can just go to the center cities. If you don't like those places, you can um, stay to, to where it's quieter, the, the temples or shrines are a um, little outside the center cities of Kyoto is already perfect, the atmosphere and everything. So you get to choose basically. You get to have the good sides of both. And I really um, enjoy, enjoy it myself personally. And that's something that I really recommend for the students too. You get to you know relax sometimes, but also have a chance to talk to and meet a lot of Japanese people too, because it's not too um, quiet, yes. And the third reason, the most important one for me, is actually related to the one I just talked about. The third reason is Kyoto has a lot of young people in its cities. Now that's because um, I once made a video talking about the five facts you didn't know about Kyoto. And in that video, I talked about that too, but Kyoto has the most number of universities and I believe maybe high schools too. Uh, um, absolutely university and graduate schools, yes. So um, it means that Kyoto has the most number of students, yes. So it also means that Kyoto has the most number of people in their, um, in their 10s and 20s, actually. So that is a great thing for people who want to study in Japan, right? It means you're uh, much, it's much easier for you to find a friend in your own generation, yes. Um, of course, there are a lot of great uh, university outside of Kyoto too, like in Tokyo, in Osaka, in Nagoya, and other places too. But in Kyoto, it's just simply much easier to meet more people, yes. And there's a wider option of choosing from universities, yes. And of course, I went to university in Kyoto, yes. So I was born in Kyoto, but I was brought up in Hiroshima and then from university I came out to Kyoto when I was 18 years old, so I was 9 years old. And I went to Dosha University. If, if you're interested in Dosha, they um, accept a lot of foreign students too, by the way, so uh, I do really highly recommend it. But So Dosha is great. Um, the other universities like Ritsumeikan or Ryukoku universities, these um, universities all accept foreign students too. Yes, And it's just really great. It's really energetic. It's young the cities are. There's a lot of activities for young people going on. There are a lot of restaurants and cafes or um, places like that, you know, that are made for young people for them to enjoy. Yes. But again, but again, the first reason, right? There's also the old culture and history together in one city. So you get to enjoy the old you know, the culture, but you also get to meet up with the younger people, you know, in your about your own age. So Again, I'm talking about the uh, the bigger population or the fewer popula population thing too, but you just get to, you know, enjoy the best of both worlds, if that makes sense. So yeah, so these three reasons would definitely be my, um, the reasons why I recommend Kyoto to everyone who is um, willing to study in Japan. I would, I would say it would be a great experience for you to come to Japan for about a year or maybe even longer, yes. And there is also, by the way, a secret uh, fourth reason too, and it's uh, you get to maybe be able to meet Let's Ask Shogo's Shogo's, so that would be the secret fourth uh, reason, so. Maybe, maybe in the future, I'll be able to do um, a cultural experience facility or I'm really, this is like a bizarre dream that I have, but I really want to start like a bar or somewhere where my uh, subscribers, my viewers, my friends can gather together and enjoy. I really want to have a stage there so I can um, ask my friends who do instruments or dancing and come there once in a while, you know, to do their performances. I think that'd be great. Yes. So yeah. So that's the secret fourth reason. Yes, well, it's half a joke, but yeah. Still, yeah, if, if you do actually have occasion to come to Kota, you can contact me. It'd be great if we can meet up, if I have the time at that time. Yes, it's, it's really up to the, um, the, really the timing, yes. But it'd be great if we could do that too.
All right, thank you so much for listening to today's podcast. As I always say, the ultimate goal of my life is to make all Japan lovers' dreams come true. And what I mean by that is that I know there are a lot of people who have their hopes and dreams in Japan, as we were just talking about today. There might be people who want to study Japanese in Japan, they want to train in the traditional culture like martial arts or tea ceremonies and such, and may want to travel to Japan simply to see the environment and the history and such, as old buildings in Kyoto, like temples and shrines. But I'm very worried that. Japan will not be able to provide these things in the f- near future because, as I always talk in my, my videos, there's a lot of social problems going on in Japan. We are losing our traditional culture, including the environment, na- natural environment, also the old temples and shrines, and、um, the younger generations who are responsible for carrying on these good things about Japan are suffering and dying, as you might know, the, the suicide rate. The young generation suicide rate is the highest in the world, and the overtime work and everything. So, I'm here to try to solve these social problems, try to、um, evolve and preserve both. This is really important. Preserve and also evolve the traditional culture. And lastly, I want to support the younger generation by creating businesses for them, to, for them、uh, providing a place for them to shine. Yes. So, this is my dream. I'll be using all my, lo- my life、yes, to do this and achieve this dream. Yes, I really hope that I'll be able to help out in maybe just a little bit, but that'd be great if I could help out even one millimeter forward. It'd be great, yes. But I, I won't be wasting one. Second of my life to do this, yes. And my first step, by the way, as you might know, is to achieve 1 million subscribers by the end of next year. So it'd be great if you give me likes and comments in my main channel's videos. Also, if you find anything interesting, it'd be great if you can share them on your SNSs or with your friends and family nearby. Yes. And if you'd like to support me even more, it'd be great if you can give me thanks on the videos or join my membership. I'll be waiting for you to join. Yes. Okay, then thank you so much for listening. If you have any, any other questions about studying in Japan, it'd be great if you could let me know in the comments or give me DMs through Instagram. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much.